Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about the right coronary artery angiogram and how do we recognize the right coronary artery on the angiographic films. Uh, so today, today we are going to be looking at the LAO view for the right coronary artery. And if you can look at the picture one here, uh, I have shown a diagram for the right coronary artery and on to the left of the screen you can see a live angiographic cine loop for a patient who is undergoing a coronary angiogram in the right coronary artery. For the most part, right coronary artery is easy to recognize because that's the only artery on the right side as compared to the left system where you have to make a distinction between the LED left circumflex or in some patient ramus intermedius. So as a, as a mental exercise, what we have been doing for the left system, let's look at the picture one here. And I want you to look at the catheter. In this case, when you are engaging the right coronary artery, <clears throat> that it can be a Judkin's right catheter. Or if it is a radial axis, you can also use a Tiger or a Jackie catheter. So if you look at this picture in one, you see that the catheter is coming from the top. You don't see anything coming from the diaphragm, below the diaphragm, as we saw in the left system. So this is probably a radial axis for the coronary angiogram. And again, as we learned from our left system coronary angiogram, since the catheter is opened like an L, that's probably an LAO view. Um, after the catheter, we move on to the to the coronary artery. Um, I have made it in red color. You see that right, right coronary artery. In an LAO view, most of the time, the right coronary artery looks like a C. It is opened up nicely. You can see the body of the of the right coronary artery. And the first branch that you might see coming off from the right coronary artery and probably going around like 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock position is the conus branch. In the past, it was an important branch or artery, especially if you were doing a coronary angiogram and your catheter selectively engage, engages the, the conus and you inject into that conus branch, the patient can go into V-fib or VT. The reason for that in the past we were using probably the dyes, the dye which was hypertonic, high osmolar, with high osmolality. And then when you inject the dye selectively into the conus branch, the patient on the table would go into VT or VFib. We're not entirely clear, but one of the hypotheses is that conus branch supplies the RVOT right ventricular right ventricular outflow tract and the theory is it is a area which is easily irritated and can be an itis or a source for arrhythmias that can originate from the rvot less of a concern these days especially when we have these uh, radial access catheter which have side holes so that you're not injecting all the dye selectively into the conus branch, even if your catheter is sitting in the conus. So you can still get away by uh, injecting a little amount of dye and doing the coronary angiogram. And then the dye that we are using in the cath lab now, they are more uh, isotonic, low osmolality, and relatively safe as compared to the previous one. Then we move down. This is the body of the right coronary artery. You can see it nicely. And again, as I said, in the LAO view, you will see the right coronary artery open up nicely like a C. In the middle of the artery, you will see a branch. It can be one or two branches, and these are called the marginal branches. Or we also call them RV marginal branches. And then we follow the right coronary artery and it bifurcates usually into a PLV, a branch that goes away from you, and a PDA, the branch that comes towards you. 
So the PLV also sometimes exchangeably called as posterolateral ventricular artery or posterior left ventricular artery. And then the PDA is a posterior descending artery. The PDA is an artery that runs in the inferior portion of the heart and also supplies about one third of the interventricular septum. Depending on which artery, either the right system or the left system, gives the PDA, you'd label the circulation as right dominant, left dominant, or co dominant. By far, about 80 to 85 percent of the times, the circulation, coronary circulation in patients is right dominant, meaning the right coronary artery gives the posterior descending artery. In about 10 to 15 percent of the patients, you might have the left circumflex giving the PDA, or in that case, we call left posterior descending artery, and that's about 10 to 15 percent of the time, and that's called the left dominant system. In about 15 to 20 percent, you might have what we call like a co-dominant where a portion of the PDA is uh, is supplied by the right coronary artery and a small branch of the PDA is also given by the left circumflex. So with that, we move on to the, the structures other than the coronaries. In the angiogram, you see the diaphragm here coming into the view and the spine, depending on how much angulation you have on the II, the spine might be shifted towards a little bit on the right or maybe in the center. So with that, we move on to the picture two here. As I said, this view is a straight LAO view that you have not added any cranial or caudal angulation. Um, and again, as I said, since it's only one artery going to the right side, it's relatively easy to look at that artery without putting any cranial or caudal um, angles to it. But in some patients, you might need to look at the body or the bifurcation of the cor right coronary artery, and that's when you might need some degree of angulation. It can be either the cranial or caudal. So if you want to look at the distal bifurcation, let's see in this picture two, and you want to separate the PLV and the PDA, you might add a little bit of cranial angulation. By doing that, you might foreshorten the body of the right coronary artery a little bit, but still you can see that, but you might see the bifurcation more obvious if you move the II towards a little cranial position. And if you are trying to look at the, the body of the right coronary artery and not, much, not very much interested in the PLV or the PDA branch or their bifurcation, you can move the II to the caudal position and that way it's going to open up the right coronary artery more so that you can see the more of the body of the right coronary artery. So here, the RV marginal branch, if you see, it probably comes in the middle of the right coronary artery, goes um, like nine o'clock position, but you, you will see that it kind of overlaps. And one, once we will be discussing the RAO view for the right coronary artery, you will see that how nicely the branching vessels, RV marginal, PD and PLV are separated and easy to appreciate. So with that, we move on to the picture four here. It's kind of a little diagram um, to should look at the right coronary artery. So if you are in an LAO view, basically this is the wall or the two-dimensional area of the right coronary artery that you will be able to see. The one in the yellow is area of the right coronary artery might not be obvious in the LAO view. And that's when you have to move the II to the RAO position. And that's where you can see the the portion of the right coronary artery that was hiding away from you colored yellow in this diagram here will be more obvious and the one that you are seeing in the LAO view will be uh, switched toward the other side so that you might not be able to see. So that way you can see the right coronary artery in two different orthogonal views making sure you don't miss an eccentric stenosis. 
I hope this was helpful. Um, next we will talk about the RAO view uh, and that will complete our angiographic films for the coronary circulation. Thank you. Have a good day.